سو ام بي ار اف بودكاست يعني ه- هذا البودكاست غير شوي ات ستارتس بالعربي وبعدين يتحول الى الانجليزي وحنقول لكم ليش وان شاء الله لنا لقاءات اخرى بالعربي مع خالد خالد الضبيب او كال الضبيب يا تشرفنا يا حبيبي والله يا مستمعين يا جماعه يا جماعه اسمعوا انا ما راح اتكلم كثيرا بس بدي اقول لكم انه بدي كال يقدم نفسه خالد يقدم نفسه وبعدين بدي اقول لكم بعدها هو يقول لكم من وين هو <تصفيق> فانا والله صار لي الحين 15 سنه ساكن في امريكا فما حقول لكم انا من وين بس يمكن تسمعوها في اللهجه دارس علم البيانات آه وبدأت شركة اسمها بانديتا في أمريكا قبل ثمان سنوات آه بشغل البيانات آه في highly regulated industries يعني healthcare, finance, defense آه نصنع الذكاء الاصطناعي واو فالشركة it was acquired آه من قبل آه ثمان شهور تقريبا من شركة اسمها Further وأنا الحين رئيس آه مجموعة أو قسم آه علم البيانات عندهم خالد من السعودية يا جماعة يعني ما شاء الله ما شاء الله اذا بتطلعوا على محتوى الشركه احنا راح نحول البودكاست الان من العربي الى الانجليزي لسبب بسيط جدا لانه بدي احتفظ بالبودكاست العربي طمعا مني اللي فيما بعد ولانه خالد يتكلم لغه تقنيه مرتفعه جدا اغلبها باللغه الانجليزيه فعشان نقدر انه نوصل المعلومه بشكل صالح وصحيح بدنا نحولها للغه العربيه بحيث يكون في ترجمة بالعربي تحتها تتفق؟ أكيد 100% So let's transform this into an English podcast Cal Abdubeb What have you done? What do you do for a living? Um, how'd you get there? Great question So um, I'm a data scientist by training uh, Funny story It took me seven years to finish my undergraduate And I had one major for every year <laughs> <laughs> My dad was very, very happy with me at the time. Not really. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I got into the space when I was studying uh, neuroscience and I started to work in public health. And I was working with hospital systems, looking at questions like what keeps healthy patients healthy, what keeps sick patients sick, and what drives costs. And that got me into the world of data science. I started uh, my first company, uh, Triple Analytics, to build AI systems. This is in 2013 help hospitals discover personalized treatment pathways. First time founder, uh, poor product market fit, I raised a seed round of money and that company ended up failing, but I had these relationships with hospitals. And at that time, the data science field was just getting started. In my region, in Cleveland, Ohio, where I live, there are huge healthcare systems, the most famous of which is the Cleveland Clinic, which I'm sure you know. Um, and. In that whole region, there were 150 data scientists. And so I started Pandata as a result of that gap. And over the years, our work started to focus more on machine learning and AI. And we found this secret in heavily regulated environments, high risk settings, healthcare, energy, defense, places where you don't want to make a mistake or you're dealing with sensitive data. People generally didn't want to touch those problems. And I built my business around it. <laughs> risk taker, huh? Indeed. Well. It's not about run away from the risks. It's how do you invest in the right safeguards to match the level of risk involved so that you can get to the benefit. It's, it's an opportunity, right? Indeed. Because Indeed. you look at it, it the, the need is there. Not many companies want to touch it with a 10 yard stake. Yeah. So who comes in? The brave man from Saudi. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's how I got Pandata started. And uh, when um, my company now further, um, came across us. They wanted to grow their AI and data science capability. They worked with a similar type of client. And so it made perfect sense. And uh, eight months ago now, we were acquired and it's been a really great partnership. So, so let's talk about one of the high risk areas, which is very common and everybody needs it. Everybody at one point in time goes yeah. into the healthcare system. So it's, it's something that we all need. Yeah. And we're very concerned about. How does Pandata make life easier for us? How does it impact us? Why Pandata? For sure. So um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about this in, in my session, which I'm really excited to dive more into. But one of the challenges with AI is it's software that learns from patterns. And sometimes the software, it can learn the wrong pattern. 
And so just one simple case study, uh, readmissions, it's a really big problem in clinical settings. This is where a patient comes for an inpatient treatment in a hospital. Maybe it's a surgical procedure or something else where they're inside the hospital and they're staying for multiple days. And then in 30 days or less, they come back with a complication. Readmissions drives up healthcare costs. In cancer patients, one in four comes back with a readmission within 30 days. And so it makes sense to use AI to try to predict who is likely to come back. Now, there have been case studies, and one of the most famous was conducted by the University of Chicago School of Medicine, where they found that readmissions algorithms give a score that is more intense for white patients, for example, over patients from minority backgrounds. Why is that? Historically, patients from that group had access to more resources and their, their uh, medical profile and the amount of cost that went into their care looks very different. And so the AI, it's smart, it's learning to recognize patterns and it builds off of those patterns, but it results in the wrong unintentional recommendation. And so why Pandata, why further now? Um, is we help design these algorithms in a way that safeguard against these unintentional consequences. Wow. So this is, this is the moment where I can say artificial intelligence, yeah. if you give it garbage, it'll probably give you garbage back. Absolutely. Um, amplified. Yeah. And garbage sometimes if you give it good stuff, out. it might still give you garbage back anyways. Tell me more about this. Um, these AI systems, they're very sensitive to uh, small variations. And I, I have a couple of examples that I love to use. But uh, for example, if you take a, a picture of an apple and you, you give it to the AI and say, what is this? It'll say it's an apple. And then if you take a sticky note, piece of paper, and you write iPod on it, you take that picture and say, what is this? It'll say it's an iPod. You and I both know as humans, it's an apple. And this is an unusual situation. But these algorithms, when they're exposed to things that they haven't been trained on, or doesn't exactly match the patterns they've seen before, you can get these really weird consequences. Excellent. Cal, look, um, I can talk to you for hours. I really do. I know you have a session coming up very soon. I want to ask you two last questions. Why the Knowledge Summit? Why is Pandata here in the Knowledge Summit? This was so special to me, especially as somebody in al Khalij, to see the level of investment happening now in this region to cultivate skills of the future and to build up a talent base that knows how to leverage AI, how to think about AI. And so from a personal mission perspective, I am honored and thrilled to be here for that. And I love seeing all of the diverse professionals that are sharing their thoughts that are based here from here. So it's really great to be back in this capacity. Excellent. And the, the, the very last question, I want to add something first. I am also very, very proud. It makes me very happy to say that Khal al is running a multi-billion dollar company, inshallah, very soon in America, in a field that many others wouldn't dare to be in. And he's doing a great job at it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, I mean it. Um, the, the very last question, give advice to your fellow youth in this region. Um, I, uh, one of the, the things that was most helpful to me when I went to the States, I really, I had no connections then. Um, and I, uh, as soon as I, I was encouraged actually by the university and their entrepreneurship center to start my first business. And the one thing I did really well was seek mentorship. I would ask for feedback and accept it with an open, open heart and I would follow up on that feedback and I'd go back to the mentor and show them what I was doing with the advice I was getting. And then they would introduce me to somebody else and they would introduce me to someone else. And that's a beautiful way to build a relationship of trust. Oftentimes when you're just getting started, you don't know what you can give back. You can give back by showing that you're listening. So get mentorship. That's get one. mentorship and show them that you're listening. Sure. Be okay with making mistakes. This is how we learn. I've made so many mistakes. I am making mistakes right now. And every time you make a mistake, it's not about the mistake itself, but what you do with what you learn from it. I love how you said your first company yeah. shut down. It's and a part of my evolution. He started with that. I love it. 
Cal Habibi, uh, time time is up. I know you have a session to run yeah. to. I'd love to do this more. I'd love to, um, and I'd I need to practice to do, my Arabic. Let's do one in Arabic very soon if you want. Inshallah. I'm up for it. Inshallah. Yeah, Habibi. Thank you. Thank you, Cal Debate, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at MBRF Podcast. Thank you for watching.